about technique and different approaches give you a little bit of everything just for inspiration so you feel more inspired and more creative and have some cool ideas by the end of this video please make sure to hit that like subscribe hit that bell always good to share with you whatever and if you have any questions you know I'm always here for you so keep like keep them coming I, I love answering them so let's talk a little bit about different approaches first of all let me stop that. The first thing is when I recorded that loop over here, I used something that I really enjoy using, which is both my pick and my finger, right? I guess you call that hybrid or something, but I just call it using my pick and my fingers. And the way I kind of worked on it is just I used to comp a lot like this, right? Which is also good, like you actually pull the chord as if you're kind of like you're hitting piano keys, right? Kind of like the same thing. You want to get that one attack. And I, I remember I used to kind of practice different bo bossa nova kind of feels like, you know. But then I wanted to incorporate some lines in and I, I kind of couldn't because I, you know, I don't play finger lined and stuff like that so so what I did is I just naturally now I can move between fingers and chords so that's one thing that you can practice um, I'll just show you this pattern for example so you take the pick you, you pick a chord I'm just gonna play this a cool a a chord over here, major seven, with uh, has a nice nine to it, and I'm just gonna go like and pull. And this is the, just the first very easy exercise where you need to both pull two strings. So this is the G and B strings over here, and pull the pick that it kind of grabs both A and D, and you get this. Right, and then you can either just pick one with a finger, maybe just this E string. So, so that's the first part of the exercise is just going picking and pu pulling, and then you're, you're going to this E string and you're pulling it. So, you have you see, you get this going. And then you can go even up with the pick to the E string. So you get the fifth in the bass now and you have this. Just that. Maybe like that you can see it better, right? So at first it can feel awkward, but after a while you kind of get into the... And you start adding different rhythms into that so that can be something like to da pulling together separately and then maybe going you know so now you, you can play first of all you can play the two notes with the fingers and then the pick so you can go that's another variation so two fingers then pick and then the extra note two fingers Low, high, 
You put them together, you can get this pattern. So that. All right, so just really cool. Also good for simpler stuff than Bossa Nova, just for comping. You know, I'm playing it with a pick and maybe two notes from a voicing. Now I can actually get it as if I'm playing like, you know, like a piano player. Bam, 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 chord, chord, chord. And you can practice it. For example, if I give you an exercise, that can be maybe this voicing over here. If you were in F, this would be the root, the nine and the major seven. You can play that with a pick and with two fingers and then maybe play a line. So maybe something like That's a good exercise for that. You get to grab the pick and the fingers. You get the chord and then you go. Right, and then you have this. Okay, so that's a cool thing. Another thing that I use a lot is pull-offs and hammer-ons to get a nice effect. And also, it's also good for my technique, just... It's kind of like the way I envision my sound, so I use that a lot. I just use that over here, it can be... Something like that, for example. This is a line I play quite a lot, so... You know, it's an... If it's an F Lydian in this case... I guess or so and and you can just go play a note and hammer just get used to that and then go pick again and pull off so and then go up a string play this a note and pull off just getting used to that and you can also play these notes from the scale, F and E. Pick-wise, I'm actually going down. And then when I go to the next ring, I go up. Then I go down again. Or if I'm picking more than one note per string, I will still go up if I went down before. So it's still like alternate picking-wise within that hammer-on, pull-off kind of thing. Okay, so that's another really cool thing that you can experiment with. Another thing is to add sweeps, like mini sweeps, in between your lines, like maybe... You see, I'm going... This is an F major 7 arpeggio, and I'm going like up, 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 then I play my hammer-on. So if I put everything together, here's my hybrid thingy, which I use to play a voicing, both pick and fingers. And then I can go and utilize those pull-offs and hammer-ons. And then I can utilize a sweep back to a hammer-on. So, right, and that's more about technique. Now, another thing that happens a lot is that I I have this thing like in my mind, this awareness that if I played something, now I want to be able to play it in other diatonic degrees, meaning moving everything I just played to another degree within the scale. So it's something I do a lot. So if I, if I, if I came up with an idea, just like I came up with this right now, I will then try to move that diatonically to another degree. So Instead of doing this, now I'll have this, and instead of that will be now, right? And instead of that will become, because I'm in the F Lydian tonality, moving an idea diatonically. And then we'll go. So 
for this for example would be Okay, so all of those techniques, and now I'm giving you more like a state of mind, like an approach to something that you can do with whatever you come up with. You come up with the line. What key is it? Let's move it to another degree. The whole thing really makes you get the most out of the patterns you learn. And also then when you improvise, if you want to develop a story, a motive, so you, you can keep going. I also like doing that, um, not diatonically, but over changes over changes that's more advanced but maybe you're there you can test yourself to see like maybe if i'm maybe if i'm an e but then i have i don't know like a g melodic minor right so maybe now i will need to change some notes to adapt to that new tonality of g melodic minor so that will be Will be G melodic minor, or maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm an A altered. Okay, so now I will need to adapt my 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 actual notes to be an A altered, and that will be. That's it. Okay, I really love doing that because it's like forces me to stay within my area and get the most out of my idea, which really comes handy when you're improvising in real time over changes. Um, let me see. Another thing that I try to do a lot is when I practice rhythm, I try to practice my idea in different fields. I mean, it's different subdivisions. So let's say I play this line, right? <laughs> This is obviously very 16th notes. Tin tari da bu du bu du bu du bu da. Tin pari da bu du bu du bu du bu da. But this can also be triplets. Ti ta di da du da bu du 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 bu ba ba di. Right. So just being able to feel that 16th notes, but maybe then triplets would be right. Or maybe even I I don't want to start it on the beat so i can start it in different places i can start it on the beat 16th notes or on the second 16th notes that's something i also do on the end like the second eight like the the eighth note right the upbeat or on the last 16th note one e and I'm gonna try put it all together. Let's see if I can do it. Right, and then I might experiment doing that in real time and trying to be creative um, and what like I want to conclude everything I talked about I use this as different tools creative tools that I can then apply over my tune of the week of the month sometimes I can take one tune I don't know let's say I'm working on, it, on whatever standard and I, I would take all of these different techniques and try to just be very creative with them over that one tune obviously after a while I just play whatever I feel whatever I hear uh, I take some breaks to just maybe listen to music listen to different guitar players and just wash my my brain with it um, maybe another hack that I can share with you today that is valuable to me is deep listening that means that you put on a record or a track and you can even maybe listen to that track a few times in a row and you just listen and and you try to feel as if the music is just filling your entire consciousness and you're just you're not thinking about scales or anything you're just letting that sound really go inside your consciousness and you absorb it kind of like a, a child that observes a language. Um, I think it does wonders to your playing because you're, 
getting the bigger picture of of the language you're listening to, uh, you know, jazz or whatever. And then when it's time to play, you're playing from that imagination, from that place that you develop through deep listening. That's another thing that has been huge uh, to my experience. And another hack, I guess, is for me, I like to find a time uh, every week to record a piece that is free, rubato or in time, whatever, where I record something and it's just like an emotion. It's like, here's what I feel right now and then accept it. Sometimes I would publish it without even listening to it and kind of like self-acceptance and getting kind of like, you know, pushing that perfectionism like aside for a second and just being very grateful that you can play music and just create something freely and like say like wow that's that's from the universe or god or whatever you believe it is from embrace it and it gives you some kind of like a spiritual backbone to everything you do and music is a big gift for everyone it's not a competition in my opinion and um, i think it's a beautiful thing um, if you want to check out more resources and cool stuff, check out my website, wiseguitar.com. And if you want to access the system that I've been developing for the last four years with everything from everything, so you can master fundamentals, acquire language, unleash your creativity and feel very free on the guitar. So check out my Galactic Modern Guitar Series and my ultimate bundle, you can do that in the link in the description of this video. Once again, guys, thanks so much for watching. And if you want to check out a really cool video, here's another one I think you're going to like. I'll see you in the next video.